uh, has this is there's a reservoir of petrol in here because obviously the main petrol is held in a tank which comes down and then it's held in a smaller container here with a small hole which is your main jet which allows when air's blown through um, petrol is sucked up the hole and is atomized, not atomized, um, particleized and it flies out this area so it's mixed here into the engine you can adjust this while it's still in the bike you don't actually need to take the carb off obviously you've got these so you can screw them with a screwdriver you don't even need to take it off to loosen it loosen the one on this side that's the side going to the engine and then you can turn the carb like that so you can turn it to get to the top and you can turn it to get to the bottom so your jets are in here your needles in here and your needle clip air screw is there there idler just is there the needle you get the needle out by on this on the Japanese bikes it's a screw top on these KTM's they've got the uh, what do you call them uh, allen key allen key things okay so I'm going to loosen these just and get off quick so you can, as I said, you can do this in the bike, you don't need to take your carb out to change this. You, the only reason you need to take your carb out is to clean it, that's it. All of your jetting you can do with the carb still in the bike. Screw number one. Two, okay. Obviously, your throttle cable would be coming up here. Um, I'll show you how I removed it. Okay, that piece, careful, it's got a spring that's going to want to pop out. Take that out. Obviously, your cable would be in here within this spring. Okay, put that to the side. So, this, that'll be one piece now. And then, this would be attached. I'll put this bit down for a sec. Because I was, when I first did this, I was scared to touch my carb in case there was stuff, pieces inside that I didn't have to get back together, you know, things like that, so you can see exactly how this all works. Can you see inside? The cable, it goes like this, so that's how it'll come out, and there'll be a cable here. The cable attaches in that little groove there. You get them, this is where you need some needle nose pliers. Get, you'd get the cable, like that, yeah, you grab the cable like that and you push it down and then hook it, to, you pull it towards and up because that hooks under, like under there and then up. You'll get it, you'll get the feel of it. If you... Okay, quick bit about the needle. People talk about the needle clip position. And the needle, All right? The needle is obviously the needle. It's the need. There's different sizes. There's thicker and there's thinner. Thicker is leaner because it's blocking more fuel from coming up out of the jet, and uh, richer is thinner because obviously there's more fuel coming out of the jet. To change the needle size, I'm not going to do it because my bolt in here is rounded off, and it's a pain in the ass to get this in and out. So I'm not going to do it. Um, but what you do is you just get a six mil socket. Put it in, turn it anti-clockwise, unscrews, comes out, and then there's where's the then there's the needle with a small clip that simply clips onto the side of the needle, and it clips in at different positions, different heights. It's very very simple, and that adjusts how high or low the needle hangs out of this throttle thing. Obviously, if you put it at the top clip, the needle is going to hang lower. It's going to block more fuel. From coming out of the hole. If you put the, the clip at the bottom of the needle, it's all inside here, bottom of the needle, the clip hangs higher, therefore it's letting more fuel out uh, as you turn in the throttle. Obviously, so you can imagine that's neutral, you rev, it comes up. If that needle was higher, they'd be letting more fuel out at the same revs. Put all that stuff to the side, make sure you don't lose your screws. Obviously, this came from the petrol tank, uh, that just comes off with this clip 
super easily. Um, choke here, okay. And I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you the jets. This is the float bowl, and this is one way of draining your carb. Okay, and you can see in there on the okay. If you hold it straight up, that's engine side, that's airbox side. Okay, the one on the right here, this one you can see, this is your main jet. That's the one that you can take out with a socket, a small socket. And then the one that you can't see so well is in there. That's your pilot jet. Okay. So I'm going to take these out now, because I need to reject my bike, it's too lean, which I'll, I'll explain what lean and rich and how that works in a bit. Um, I need to put a richer pilot and a richer main in, so I'll do that right now. Uh, one. Okay, and that is what a pilot jet looks like. Okay, the different sizes are the different sized holes. Bigger the size, bigger the holes. And obviously that's letting more fuel through. There's your pilot, so I'm going to change it for... This is a 42. I'm going to make the hole bigger. I'm going to put a 45 in. Allowing more fuel through because my bike seized up from it being too lean, I think, and not having and the radiator's been blocked with deep mud and me revving the piss out of it, I think. So I'm putting this one in. You can buy these from anywhere. I'm gonna put them in the bag before I lose it. There we go. This finger tight will do. And then we'll get the little socket. We'll find the right side. That's it. There we go, that's what a main jet looks like. I'm going to put that one away. That's a 202, and I'm putting in a 208, which is huge, which is for deep mud tracks, which is what I'm pretty much riding in the UK at the moment, or deep sand. So you need to keep your engine nice and rich, which means plenty of fuel. Plenty of fuel so that you don't accidentally seize it up. Like I did, being an idiot. So you can do all of this, as I said, with it still on your bike. You don't need to take half your bike apart to get to these bits. There we go. Okay, so where was I? It's hard to keep all the stuff you want to talk about in your head, so I've got a list of notes. Yeah, okay, so back to my explanation of how a carb works. Finger tight just to explain. 
Okay, so the needle going in here obviously is attached to your throttle cable. So as you pull on the throttle, that raises this needle, okay, which goes into the main jet. So it actually goes into this, right? So there's a fuel reservoir here, which is getting sucked up by the wind coming across here. And then, so as that's pulled out, it's allowing more and more and more of a gap for that fuel to come through. Eventually when it's full throttle, it's right out, and that's full, allowing the full amount of fuel to come through. Hello, right, this is the final bit of part one and this is how to measure your float heights now your float heights basically I've just done all my research and just found out about all this stuff because this is the last thing that I didn't actually know um, which I still need to figure out and I've just kind of got my head around it now the float height affects how much fuel sits in this bowl if there's too much fuel sat in this bowl um, it basically increases the fuel pressure going through the jets so you can end up with a rich condition if even if all your other jets is right you know your needles right your clips right your main your pilot your air screw everything's all set up perfectly you can still get a rich condition or a lean condition if the float height is too high or too low because it's forcing more fuel through than should be or not letting enough through um, the, the pressure is either too high or too low so to adjust Got too much stuff everywhere. Uh, to adjust the float height, it's actually very simple. It's just kind of awkward. So you take that off, okay? So you're going to hold it upside down with the choke on the back side. I want a bit more light. Yeah. We're going to hold it upside down with the choke on the back side, okay? And the float bolt off. And what you're going to do is out of the way. What you're going to do is you need to hold it at 60 degrees, okay? Is that getting in there? Yeah? 60 degrees, and then what will happen is your float, the top of this float here, should be in line with this piece here. If it hangs too far out, it's, uh, what would that be? That would be, uh, I don't know if it's too high or too low. I'm not really sure, it'd be one way or the other, you'd have to work that out. Uh, and the same obviously with that way, if it's flat, it's hanging too far in. So you want that optimum 60 degrees. It's kind of hard to do this, but I've basically made myself a little 60 degrees thing. And this bottom line wants to be flat. And then this line here should match up with the edge of that. Well, then you match that up with the edge of this. So if we, it's kind of hard to do. You probably won't be able to see it on here. But so if that's flat, and that's I'm looking from behind it. That's 60 degrees. I can basically tell that mine are pretty much right. They're pretty much okay. Okay. If they're not okay, what you do to adjust them is very, very, very simple. take the pin out you can just poke it through it's not sealed it's not fastened in any uh, at all okay take the flow out okay and you've got your needle thing that hangs and that get some more light on it that is literally held on there by this little pin thing like that right and this piece of metal, so you all you do is you bend that. You either bend it up or down, and that'll change how far this it sits, and therefore how much your float tilts. I can't tell you which way it needs to be bent to do what, because I've never done it. But obviously, just do it and you'll see. <laughs> but yeah, thank you.